This podcast is brought to you by sarahraven.com, which is home to everything you need for a truly beautiful and productive garden. You'll also find great and essential gardening kit and stylish, lovely things to have in your house to bring the outside indoors, all inspired by the garden and the house being tied together. There's also plenty of garden inspiration, how-to videos and specialist growing guides. So head over to sarahraven.com today to discover even more. Welcome to Grow, Cook, Eat, Arrange, the podcast of me, Sarah Raven, and various different guests. And I have been doing a kitchen garden mini-series, and this is the final episode of it. Um, So it's episode seven, and it's the episode concentrating on the absolute must-haves. So whatever size your garden, if you've got a window box, if you've got a doorstep, if you've got one raised bed, what would be the plants that I would recommend that you grow to really enhance your garden and your cooking? And those are these. As ever with me, and you can refer back if you want to hear more about this to early in the series, I divide between August and April and between April and August. And for me, four absolute must-haves for August to April are flat-leaf parsley, giant of Napoli. Now, I have talked about this really quite a lot in episode two, and I've mentioned it in episode three. And in fact, I think I mentioned it in episode four. So I'm not going to mention it again. I just need it to be here because... It is absolutely the one plant that if I was only going to grow one plant throughout the year, it would be flat leaf parsley giant of Napoli. It's easy to grow. It's incredibly durable to harvest, i.e. you can pick it every day of the year. It's very hardy. It can grow under frost or snow. I tend to, in the hot summer months, I have a bottle in the door of my fridge with a little bit of water in the bottom, and I just put the stems of my flat leaf parsley in the fridge, and it will last five or six days like that. So I don't even have to go out and pick it every day. But I use it in copious quantities, and I passionately recommend that is, I to me, my number one edible plant to grow, whatever month of the year it is. Number two, again, I have already mentioned in quite a lot of detail, which is chard. And I actually talked about that in episode five, which was in my favorite veg. So listen back to that maybe. But you definitely want the white stem variety, which is called Swiss chard. And there's one key thing with that is it's actually two vegetables in one. When you first harvest it, bring it in and with a sharp knife, split the white stem from the leafy green. And you just do that jump, jump, like that down one side of the stem, back the other side of the stem, and you've separated it. And the stem takes about five to six minutes to get soft to the point of a knife, whereas the green takes just over half that. So what I do is I would have a big pan of salting water with a rolling boil and in go the stems. And then after three minutes, I put the greens over the top. And that's if I'm cooking them together. And I do that an awful lot. I use it for a pasta sauce with creme fraiche and nutmeg. I use it in a bechamel sauce with a gratin with lots of parmesan. I was brought up on it on the west coast of Scotland with roast mutton. It's absolutely fantastic. It's wonderful with lemon. It's wonderful with nutmeg. It's wonderful with parmesan. It's wonderful with black pepper. It's a really all-round good egg. And um, so definitely that would be my next. And it looks great too. So it needs quite a deep pot. So 30 centimeter pot, just three plants in a sort of 40 centimeter diameter pot. And that will keep you in delicious things to eat from a very small space. The next one between August and April would undoubtedly be the more compact kale than um, my favorite of all, which is called red boar. But red boar can get up to almost a meter. So it's quite tall, really fantastic for a whopper pot. But for a slightly smaller pot, I would go for curly scarlet. 
and it's got this wonderful, looks very like red ball, rich crimson leaf and a slightly sort of purpley stem. And I've got lots of recipes for how to use that, but it's classic that you can pick it. Even if like when we were snowed in here at the end of November in winter 22, 23, I was able to pick kale to my heart's content, whatever the weather is outside. So for me, kale, curly, scarlet, and I'm very happy growing in a container on your doorstep. And the final one would be a window box of the lettuce, Merve de Cat Saison, the lovely soft textured bronze colored lettuce, which is very, very hardy. And again, even in a frost, you will be able to pick a few leaves from that once it's thawed out by midday. And so that would be my final absolute must have for August to April. And then for April to August, for its prolific nature and delicious taste, I would go for the climbing courgette called tromboncino, which looks exactly like a trombone. Well, not exactly, but it's long and thin with a sort of bulbous end, which curls round like a trombone. And the point is it's a climber. And if you've got a small garden or just a yard uh, without any beds in it, without any earth beds, but just containers, tromboncino, you can grow up and train over an arch or up and over a wall. And you want to pick the mini courgettes when they're still quite small, or you can grow them on to look rather spectacular and, and eat them more like a, a squash because the, um, the texture of the of the flesh sort of dries out and becomes more intense and squash and nutty. So courgette tromboncino for April to August. I think you'd have to go in terms of its prolific nature for a runner bean like Polestar, which is one of the stringless runners, so it doesn't get those horrible stringy bits down the side unless it gets really massive. It has bright scarlet flowers, which are delicious and taste deliciously beany. So again, teepee of canes, or even better if you can find some silver birch or twigs from the garden or twigs from the neighbor's garden or twigs from the garden center. Then a runner bean looks fabulous. And remember to pick the beans three times a week, ideally. The more you pick, the more it flowers and the more beans you will get. And then it's got to be flat leaf parsley and chard again. So we're back round to those. And I do bang on about them, but there's good reason because they are per square foot or square meter, uh, however you want to put it, they are the most prolific, easiest and tastiest veg that you can possibly grow. So for small gardens, August, April, flat leaf parsley, chard, kale, curly, scarlet, Merve de Cat Saison lettuce. From April to August, again, flat leaf parsley, chard, courgette, tromboncino, and a runner bean like Polestar. And that's it. So I hope this mini series has given you a good kind of galvanizing call to arms to think that there's still time to sow these veg that's going to feed you all the way through from August till April. And particularly you have a greenhouse, please don't leave it empty as the tomatoes come out. Fill it with lots of these delicious things. And, you know, there's so many more once you've discovered these, you know, all the different brassica, uh, lovely stir fry and salad greens like mitzunas and mustards. There's lots, lots, lots more. So use this as the year and the moment in the year to really get going with having delicious things to eat just outside your back door. You can find more information, photos and advice sheets on all the plants and recipes we talk about on this podcast by heading to the show notes or at sarahraven.com forward slash podcast.